now let's deliberate on the atomic form factor let's see how we can understand anything better of it if we understand this that will sort of make our understanding of x-ray diffraction or any other wave diffraction in a crystal sort of complete so the scattered radiation from a single atom takes into uh, account the in interference effect within the atom so the form factor fj that we have considered earlier that we have defined earlier for jth atom can be written as dv we have already written this earlier in j function of r times exponential of minus i g dot r now this integral is extended over the electron concentration associated with a single atom if we consider that the angle between r and g that is alpha then g dot r becomes g r cosine of alpha and let's assume that the electron distribution is spherically symmetric although in case of many orbitals it is not spherically symmetric but if we assume it to be spherically symmetric we won't be pretty accurate but the accuracy level that we will have would be sufficient for describing or qualitatively understanding the diffraction pattern now if we assume the electron distribution to be spherically symmetric then f j this can be written as twice pi integrated over dr times r squared this is the volume element in case of spherically symmetric uh, charge distribution it doesn't depend on any theta or phi uh, then we have d of cosine of alpha in j that's a function of r exponential of minus i g r cosine alpha and this can be written as twice pi integration over dr r squared n j r e power i g r minus e power minus i g r over i g r so this we obtain after integrating over d of cosine alpha with the range minus 1 to 1 that is the full range of cosine alpha that we have we have integrated over uh, d cosine alpha using this range and got this quantity now once we have this then we can write the atomic form factor as f j can be written as 4 pi times integration dr in r times r squared equals sine gr over gr
once we have obtained this if uh, the same total electron density if we assume it to be concentrated at the at r equals 0 that is at the nucleus which is never true but we, we can, can consider, consider that the electron density is maximum near the nucleus it tends to the nucleus site if we consider that kind of a situation which could be considered in a crystal where most of the space is empty the electrons are closely bound close to the nucleus and very few roam around and participate in bonding so this assumption would also not be very wrong although in the d discussion of electronic states electron uh, the bonds between two atoms this kind of description won't work at all but as long as we are using x-ray diffraction for determining the structure this would still work in this limited context so if we assume something like that then we will have limit r tending to zero sin gr over gr within this assumption and that will give us one so we will have fj equals 4 pi integration over okay so this quantity is actually proportional to this for each electron this is the situation uh, 4 pi dr nj r r square this quantity would become the number of electrons simply from each electron we will have atom contribution to atomic form factor equals one and the total atomic form factor would become the atomic number z is the atomic number so what did we learn from this discussion so far we have learned that there are uh, there is a diffraction condition that we can recast in many different forms we learned all the various statements of the diffraction condition we learned the primitive translation vector in the reciprocal lattice we developed the concept of Rilva zone and the scattering amplitude structure factor and atomic form factor these are the things that we have developed a concept for